Uh, we are starting the morning session today, and the first, uh, we have three lectures, as every morning. And the first uh, lecture is by Lorenzo Pavesi from the University of Trento. And uh, the title is uh, very interesting for a morning talk, so it will be, appears to be very stimulating. It's a question, is it possible to make uh, living neurons and optical micro-resonators uh, computed together? That is the question. And I leave, uh, okay, I, uh, you can share your screen, uh, Lorenz. Okay, so now you should see my screen. So uh, thank you, Stefan and the, the, the other uh, organizer of, of this uh, 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 winter school, may I say, of this school, very fascinating about the application of machine learning to uh, photonics. So uh, before uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, the topic of my talk, I want to briefly introduce where, we, where I am. So I'm from uh, the University of Trento. So Trento is in, the, uh, in a mountain region. And in, in this time, despite the closing of the uh, uh, um, ski field, so you can enjoy uh, the mountains. So here is this me on this Saturday on top of the mountains. And what you see on the back, on the back is uh, uh, Dolomiti of Brenta, so Brenta Dolomite. So if you like the place, so I do invite you uh, uh, to enjoy this, uh, this uh, uh, beautiful surrounding at the school that uh, will be in uh, June uh, uh, this year on neuromorphic photonics. And the school will be on uh, Monte Bondone, that is a mountain near uh, Trento. So let me go back to the, uh, the topic of uh, 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 today's lecture. So this is uh, the title, is it possible to make living uh, neurons and optical microresonators compute together? And so this research is uh, carried on uh, uh, within uh, a few uh, European projects. So we have a backup project that is about neuromorphic photonics and the brain. And then uh, another European project that is about uh, the use of photonic neural network to uh, recover optical uh, signal. And this research is also carried out uh, uh, within a, a, a national Italian collaboration that is called the uh, PELM project, where PELM stands for uh, Photonics Extreme Learning Machine, and is supported by a strategic uh, 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 project of the uh, University of Trento on brain network and, uh, and dynamics. And we do also host a uh, Marie Curie uh, uh, fellow in uh, a project that is called Ida. So the vision we have in this activity is to take a biological culture, so a network of neurons, uh, take a photonic integrated circuit, and then merge them together in a hybrid artificial uh, biological network which uh, uh, could uh, uh, think or could compute uh, uh, together. So this is the vision that uh, and the uh, aim of our uh, activities. And a natural question could be, why, why do you want to use photonics to uh, 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 develop these hybrid uh, uh, circuit? And the idea is to use photonic because light is extremely fast. Just to give you a few numbers about what, what, what we are aiming and the, the, the kind of improvement that we could potentially achieve. So if you look at the typical time scale at which uh, biological neurons elaborate information, so we have that the typical time scaling is in order of milliseconds. While on the other side, the uh, uh, neurons uh, are able to switch at the typical uh, speed of uh, photonic components, so let's say a few picosecond. And this few picosecond comes from the fact that in photonics, uh, information processes occurs at rate that are extremely high in the order of uh, terabit per second. And so if you look uh, at the uh, uh, difference between the time scale of neurons and the time scale of optics, you see that you gain by using optics a factor of uh, uh, nine order of magnitude. And so if now we look at the, what happens in our brain, so the 
typical timing for our brain to develop and to learn from experience. So what we get is that uh, uh, it takes uh, uh, roughly uh, uh, the, uh, the a period from uh, when we uh, uh, when we start the braining process up to when the brain is formed and the uh, um, education is uh, performed of, of the order of 15 years, which are more or less uh, uh, 500 uh, uh, mega uh, second. But now, if you scale down everything by the factor that uh, is given by the different time scale of photonics and the uh, biological events, so you see that uh, for uh, getting the same learning in an artificial uh, optical uh, brain, so you, you take only five, the 0 0.5 seconds. So you have a significant scaling down of the learning uh, speed. And so this is one of the motivation of using photonics. So the, the kind of experimental platform uh, uh, that we are using is on one side, the photonic chips, on the other side, a, a neuronal culture. So where we have uh, many neurons and what we aim to do is to place the neurons on top of the photonic chip. So here you see a, an image at the uh, optical microscope where you have a, a, a few neurons that have been plated on a photonic chip. And what you can see are these uh, 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 black lines, and the black lines are the uh, uh, silicon waveguards uh, that are used to channel the optical information. And then you do see these uh, uh, feature, which are the neurons that are forming uh, uh, networks among them. And what you can observe in this uh, uh, comparison of, uh, of these two images is the fact that typical size of the optical waveguide and the typical size of the neurons, living neurons, matches. And so this platform uh, uh, can be used uh, to make this hybrid uh, uh, network. So the objective of the uh, uh, work we are doing is on one side to understand what is happening and to try to control both the neurons as well as the optical components. And for us, the main uh, 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 optical component is going to be the optical microresonators. Then, once we understand what is happening, so we want to model and design on one side network made by uh, neurons in vitro. On the other side, we want to make a neural network by using uh, a photonic circuits. And at the end, we want to merge together the two in order to make this uh, uh, ultimate goal of a hybrid photonic biological network. And the uh, motivation for forming this hybrid uh, uh, photonic biological network is to, on one side, improve the possibility to compute by taking the speed as well as the learning uh, uh, of the uh, uh, biological neurons. And the application, therefore, is in computation, in data com, and we also foresee application in uh, medical science, especially in terms of uh, curing neurological disorder by using photonic circuits. So this is the objective. And so the question is, uh, could we do this hybrid network? So is it possible to make living neurons and optical microresonator compute together? And uh, uh, the answer is uh, not yet. Uh, we are not yet ready to answer. Uh, so since the, uh, what I'm talking to you is essentially a progress report uh, uh, aimed at achieve this, uh, 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 this goal. And uh, I want to take uh, in these uh, 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 two lectures a very, a very practical point of view. So I try to reduce at minimum the theoretical concept and go to uh, uh, discuss the uh, practical uh, aspect of uh, making those uh, uh, different uh, networks uh, to uh, uh, work together. And the reason why this is a progress report is because uh, we are in the middle of a four years longer project. And so essentially we are still working on the uh, uh, two different platforms and we have not merged together with the two platforms. So then here is the time to make the outline of the 
uh, presentations. Uh, in the first lecture today, I will talk about uh, uh, neurons. In the second lecture, tomorrow at 3 p.m., I will talk about the photonics uh, uh, component, which are the optical micro resonator. And then in the third and final lecture, that will be sometimes in the future, I will uh, show that uh, those two uh, uh, different networks can uh, emerge in a hybrid network and they can uh, compute uh, together. So let me start uh, uh, with the first lecture. So the outline of uh, uh, today's talk is essentially to uh, show you uh, what is happening within uh, a, a network of uh, living neurons and how can uh, 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 how we can influence the behavior of these uh, uh, networks. I should thank uh, uh, the collaborator that we have. So this is a, a, a dream team made by uh, um, different uh, 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 specialists. So we have biologists, we have physicists, we have electrical engineering. And uh, specifically, I would like to thank uh, Beatrice Vignoli and uh, Clara uh, Zaccaria and Ilya Auslander who provide me uh, uh, most of the slide that I'm uh, uh, presenting uh, together uh, uh, today. So neurons, what are neurons? So neurons are uh, uh, the basic cell in our brain. And so we can say that the neuron is the basic unit of computation in the brain. So how it uh, works, so neurons receive a, a, a chemical signal from other, other neurons, integrate those signals, and depending on the number of factors, either does nothing or generates an electrical signal, which is called an action potential, which in turn signals the activity to other connected neurons. And the connection between two different neurons occurs through synapses. So essentially what, what we have in a neuron, so we have the body, so where the integration is done, then we have a longer process that is called the axon through which the electrical signal uh, uh, propagates. And then at the end of the axon, we have the terminals where synapses are formed and synapses are a, a contact point between one neuron and the other's neurons. And if we look at the uh, uh, processes that are uh, formed on the other neuron, so we do see that these uh, processes that are called the drives and uh, uh, on which we have many synapses, so these uh, processes are in contact with other neurons receive the signal from the other neurons and then carry this signal to the uh, body of the neuron. So signal propagation occurs through a, an electrical potential in the axon and through a chemical exchange at the synapsis level. Uh, what, what is specifically interesting in, in the uh, neuron uh, uh, morphology is the fact that the neuron is polarizing, meaning that uh, we have uh, input ends that are the uh, dendrites, and then we have output, output ends that is the axon and the terminals of the axon. So we have that in a neuronal network, so we have a flow of information from one neuron to the other neuron. And so this uh, 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 information propagates through this uh, connection. So this is the basic of uh, uh, the neuron. Then we have the uh, issue about how our brain store information, how the information can be stored in the brain. And the process of storing information is called memory. And uh, it was uh, uh, conceived uh, 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 at the beginning of uh, last centuries that the memory uh, in our brain reside in specific assembly of neurons of cells that are called engrams. And these engrams, which is the basic physical unit of the memory, is formed by strengthening 
the neuronal uh, connection. So what we have is that we have that the memory is stored in our or information are stored in our brain in form of uh, engrams, which are assemblies, network, what we call network of neurons. And this network of neurons is stabilized, which in uh, uh, biological terms means uh, potentiate by strengthening the neuronal connections. So essentially what we have is that we have a series of neurons that before the learning process have some uh, connections. And then during the learning process, we encode the information in specific connection between different neurons. And then if we want to store up the memory, so these specific connections are long-term potentiate. So the connection between different synapses is strengthened by the process of learning. And so at the end, that's so we have the formation of a specific network between different neurons and the memory is stored in that network. So here, what we want to do is that we want to control the formation of a neuronal network in such a way to be able to write and read memories. So we have to follow these uh, uh, different uh, Ah, so we have to form a network, we have to consolidate the network, meaning that we have to store the memory and then we want to write and read those memories. So to form the network, so we need to culture neurons. We do in a, a, reduce, a reductionistic model, so we do this uh, uh, neuronal culture in vitro. And then we have to influence the growth of the neurons in such a way to develop specific factors. Once we have this uh, uh, interconnection between the neurons, so we have to consolidate the network. So we have to intervene in the uh, uh, neuron activity in order to consolidate uh, only those connections that we are willing to uh, uh, consolidate in order to make uh, our engram. And then once we have the engram, so we need to potent long-term potentiate the uh, as a connection in order to consolidate the patterns and then meaning we have to write the memory and then uh, read the neuronal activity in such a way to have access to the information that has been stored in this uh, uh, neuronal pattern. So let's start from the culture of neurons in vitro and here biology came at rescue so we take uh, uh, neurons from mice uh, and then uh, uh, we form uh, 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 cultures, and then we look at this culture by using an uh, optical imaging setup where we have a confocal uh, microscope and a super resolution uh, 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 mode. So, in, in this way, by using uh, uh, the typical biological techniques that are uh, uh, chemical labeling, the different processes, the different part of, of the neuron. So we are able to evidence, uh, uh, for example, in this image here, so we do evidence the body of the neurons and with the white marker, so we have evidence the process. And, uh, uh, and in this way, so we have access to the uh, accents so where the accent is, and we have access where the body of the neuron is. Then we can use other kinds of markers that are uh, localized at the synapses level. And we can use the green market to evidence the free synaptic uh, uh, contact, as well as we can use the red market to evidence the postsynaptic contact. So here, here are the synapses of the neurons that send the information. Here are the synapses of neurons that receive the information. And then, so you can superimpose those images and you have the contact point between the different neurons. So this is imaging, so you can culture the neurons, we can evidence by using optical imaging the different uh, uh, um, uh, component of the uh, neuronal vector, both the neural body, both uh, the axon, as well as the synapses. And we can tag the presynaptic uh, 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 contact and the postsynaptic uh, contact on the neuron.
So the second aspect that we want to develop is to influence the growth of the neuron. So this is typically what happens in the uh, uh, neurons. And so you take neurons which are not yet developed from embryos. And so you see that you have the body and then the series of uh, processes that randomly are expressed, uh, retracted, expressed and retracted. And after a, a very short period, so after uh, uh, roughly one, two day in culture, you see that one of these processes start to be dominant and develop uh, into the axon. And so here is the uh, uh, connection, uh, preferential connection through which the body of the neuron send its electrical signal to the others connected neurons. And then uh, 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 during the maturation of uh, the growth of the neuron, so you end up that after a few days, the, so the neuron is mature, so all the process have been defined, so you have the axon, you have the dendrite, and the formation of the uh, uh, networks. So what we want to do now is to try to uh, direct the, the growth of the axon where we want to have uh, the connection uh, happen. So here is an example of uh, 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 through images of uh, what happens in a neuronal culture. So this is a very young uh, culture, so only 24 days, and you see the body of the neurons, and then you see all the process, but you don't see the formation of the steel, you don't see the formation of the axon. Then if you wait uh, two days, uh, so then uh, still you see the axon, but by using this uh, uh, tacking technique that I show you, so you can also demonstrate that, that a few of these processes have been developed into uh, an axon. And here is an example of these axon. Here it is uh, a, 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 the example of uh, uh, the axon over exposed to the body of the neuron. And so here is another example. So this neuron has developed this other uh, axon. So you see that after two days, so naturally, spontaneously, one of the processes that uh, uh, were presented in the uh, uh, immature neurons has developed into the axon. And uh, finally, after three days, uh, 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 you see that uh, you have a series of uh, uh, axons and a series of connections between all the different uh, neurons in, in, in your culture. So the, the goal here is uh, uh, to uh, uh, try to direct the, the expression of the axons along the, a specific direction in order to sculpt a, a, a given pattern uh, 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 between the neurons. And so the way we, we, we want to do is that to uh, control the uh, um, axon uh, 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 development and direct uh, the axon development along a specific pattern. Here you see a, a work that uh, uh, Professor Canossa and Dr. Vignoli of the uh, uh, University of Trento with, with whom uh, I'm collaborating. So this is, you see, a work they did that in order to demonstrate it by using uh, uh, chemicals, it is possible indeed to influence the uh, axon expression. So here you have uh, two different uh, uh, examples of two different neurons. One neuron that is on uh, these blue stripes where you have these uh, 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 chemicals, BDNF, uh, which allows you to direct the uh, growth of the axon. And what you see here is the very young neurons that start to express uh, the uh, different processes and one of these process after uh, 24 hours develop into an axon and the uh, axon growth occurs exactly along the stripes. So what is shown here is the fact that you have influenced the uh, growth of the axon and you have directed the growth of the axon along the stripe that you have uh, uh, previously uh, 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 fabricated. Here, there is another example of a neuron that is not on the proper stripes. And what you see is that uh, after the same timing, uh, uh, one process, so this small process here, develops into the axon. And you do not have, as in this case, the preferential growth of the axon along the stripe, 
but what happened to is the axon express and grow randomly uh, according to itself and the uh, uh, growth of this axon is not aligned along the stripe. So these uh, um, examples show you that indeed it is possible to control the uh, axon growth. What we want to do, yet we have not done, is to use, uh, instead of chemicals, is to use light in order to direct uh, the uh, axon growth. So this is possible because there is a protein that is RAP1 that can be photoactivated and uh, the use of this protein allows to uh, uh, localize the uh, um, protrusion of the specific process and direct the growth of this specific protein, protein along the direction which you are interested in. So in this way, I've shown you that uh, it is impossible in principle to influence the growth of the neuron and so to create a pattern, a specific network between the neurons. Then the next point is to try to uh, consolidate the connection, meaning that we want to influence the neuron activity because strengthening a connection means that you want to uh, activate preferentially the, the specific connection between that specific connection between the two different neurons. And so the question is, how can we influence the activity of the neuron? So one very uh, common method is to use electrophysiology. So you use an electrode that uh, uh, stimulates the electrical activity of the neuron. And in this way, so you can activate or you can depress the uh, uh, activity of the neuron. However, since we are working with uh, uh, light, so we are uh, photonic skies, so we decide to use another technique that is called optogenetics. So this technique optogenetics is essentially a, a, a technique that is based on the insertion of uh, light sensitive protein on the neuron, new, um, uh, neuron membrane. So you insert this light sensitive protein and those light sensitive protein control the ion pump that are uh, uh, essentially to essential to determine the electrical activity of uh, the neuron. And so the idea is to use this uh, light sensitive protein uh, in order to activate the uh, uh, flow of ions through the uh, membrane of the neuron. And uh, the reason is because the uh, um, electrical activity of the neuron results from the inflow or outflow of uh, ions through the membrane. And so if you can open and close the pump, so the channel uh, uh, through the membrane, so you can induce or you can depress the electrical activity of your neuron, which means that the line can be used to activate or depress the neuron uh, uh, activity. What is uh, 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 specifically in, in interesting in the use of optogenetics is the fact that the stimulation is extremely selective. So you can use uh, light sensitive proteins that are uh, uh, located on the body, on the axon, or on the spine, on the synapses of the neurons. So you can have a very high spatial resolution. Moreover, you can use different kinds of proteins that are sensitive to different uh, wavelengths of light, and uh, those proteins can both open and so stimulate the activity, or they can close, uh, 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 and so they can depress the uh, activity of the neuron. And finally, so this technique is extremely uh, uh, not invasive in terms of the fact that you do not have to insert your electrode through. Uh, 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 the uh, neuronal culture. So we have developed this technique. So here is an example of uh, uh, the technique that we have developed. So we use uh, uh, genetics means, so we insert uh, a specific gene in the neurons, uh, which uh, express uh, uh, the uh, specific channel robotsin that we are interested. And then by using photostimulation, we look at the insertion of the channel rhodopsin 
and the uh, optical signal coming from those channel reductions. And so here are uh, examples. So this is uh, an optical image where you see the body of the neurons and then the uh, process. Here is another example. So here we have the neuron and then here we have the process. And then if you shine the proper uh, uh, wavelength, which is typically is in the blue, so 450 nanometers, you see that you can activate the emission from the channel rhodopsin that was marked in this case with a, a, a green fluorescence protein. And so you pump the system, you obtain a, a, a green map of where the channel rhodopsin has been localized. And what this image show you is the fact that you indeed, so you are, uh, we are quite able to insert the channel rhodopsin in our system, in our network. And the, this insertion allows you to excite the neurons. So now we are able to uh, uh, act on the neurons by using optogenetics. And the next point is how can we now to store and write and read memories? So the first point is to consolidate specific pattern among the uh, 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 neurons. And so the idea is that, that what we want to do is that to, we want to write an engram uh, by using pattern illumination. And so by using pattern illumination, so we do activate a group, a specific group, a specific number of interconnected networks. And so in this way, so if you activate those networks, so you can consolidate, so you can uh, strengthen the connection, and so you can store your information in that specific area. So we can, uh, by using light. So we can use two different uh, means, uh, tools to uh, write the engram. So the first one is through top illumination. So we. Uh, illuminate uh, the uh, neuronal structure through uh, a, a specific pattern, or what we want also to do is to use a photonic chip uh, by inserting the light in a fiber and then uh, going to address a specific numbers of neurons in our uh, uh, culture. So let me see the first and the second example. So the first one is through photonics, the second one is through a digital light processing, DLT. So let me start to describe the DLT techniques that we are using. So DLT is nothing else than the matrices of uh, uh, micro electromechanical uh, 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 mirrors. And you can address each one of these mirrors in such a way to form the kind of image that you want to have. And this is the reason why it is called digital, because each pixel is uh, addressed and is orientated. Light processing, because the action of the different pixels allow you to obtain the specific pattern that you desire on the image plane. So here is the uh, setup. So this is the DLT. Then we have an imaging system. We enter into the microscope and then we project uh, the desired image on the uh, 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 field of view of our microscope. And what you uh, see here are the specific patterns. For example, here you can form stripes, here you can form dots, then you can concentrate the dots. And so by controlling uh, 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 through a software the, the uh, image that you want to realize and using this system, so then we can project the, the uh, specific factor in the uh, field of view of our microscope. And now what we can do is that we can take a neuronal culture. So here is an example, a neuronal culture. So here you have the neurons. And then what you can do is that you can shine the light only on a few of those neurons. And then you look at the excitation image by uh, mapping the calcium. Uh, uh, so the specific markers that tell you whether the neurons are activated or not. And uh, uh, in this image, you see the activation of the neuron. And uh, so the, the round uh, circles is where the light has been projected, has been constructed. And the uh, dots are where the neurons uh, uh, are uh, reacting. 
And what you see here is specifically interesting is the fact that we are pumping these neurons. So these neurons show activation, but then we also see that this neuron is sending a signal to nearby neurons. So this neuron is part of the network. So here is another example. So where we have taken half of the focal plane and we have illuminated only half of the image plane, the other half is not that illuminated. So then uh, we have inserted channel rhodopsin into our uh, uh, neuronal culture. And so here you see the, uh, the neurons that have been transfected uh, uh, with the uh, channel rhodopsin, and meaning that those neurons can be uh, uh, optically excited. And then uh, uh, we have illuminated half of the network so these are the neurons that are directly illuminated. The other neurons here are in the dark, so they are not directly illuminated. And then we shine light. And then what we do observe is that we are stimulated clearly those neurons that are on the bright illuminated part. But what we also see is that the excitation, so the information, is moving from this neuron that has been optically stimulated to this other neuron that is in contact with the optical stimulated neuron. So what we do see here is the fact that these neurons are part of a, a network where signals can flow from one neuron to the other. So here is an example. Here is another example where we have many more neurons than in the previous one. So those are the neurons that are directly illuminated. So we have that a few of them react more, but also the fact that the information flow from this part to this other part. And so here we have a network of neurons that are uh, connected together. So this is one way to excite uh, a full pattern illumination in these neurons. And we do see that indeed the neurons selectively respond to the uh, illumination pattern. pattern. So the second way that we have developed is to use uh, a, a, a photonic chip. So here the idea is the following. So this is a cross section of our photonic chips where we enter with visible light, which is not easy because typically photonics is then at least in silicon photonics is then at the 1.5 micron or 800 nanometer. But here, to excite the neurons, so we need to use uh, 450 to the blue light. And so we had to develop everything in the blue. And so we enter with the light in the, in the, in the silicon waveguide, and then through scatters, which can be either reflector or gratings. So we do uh, direct the light out of the chip in such a way to excite locally the neurons. So what we decide to do is to use grating. And so we develop a chip with a arrays of gratings, which are able to uh, 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 project the, the light on the plane where the neuron lies. And uh, this is the typical spot. This is a simulation. So this is the typical spot that the grating is making at five micron above the uh, waveguide plane, which is where the neuron lies. Line, and then you see that the spot size is compatible with the typical size of the neuron, which is a few micron in diameter. And so this is the uh, design of the chip where you see the uh, uh, gratings that are used to enter the light signal into the chip. Then the light is traveling through the waveguide and then is directed to a matrix of gratings that. Uh, uh, scatter out the light from the sheet. So here is an example where we have a fiber. So we insert the light in the sheet. So the light is split along the different uh, waveguides. And then each one of these waveguides is addressing one specific point in the grating matrices. So here is an example of a square uh, 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 of uh, bright spots that can be used to excite uh, the neurons that lies on top of the square. And here, so what we also have is a, a, another uh, um, geometry where we have a many different input gratings. So here we can use uh, uh, 34 different fibers to address each one of the gratings in the 
drifting array. And so here the, the point is then we have to couple the line E and so we take a fiber array. So this is a, an array of fibers, 32 fibers, which is very carefully aligned and stuck and bonded to the photonic chip. And the uh, uh, final result is this one where we have all the 34 fibers that are um, connected to this fiber array. And then the fiber array is uh, carefully aligned to the uh, um, photonic chip in such a way to be able to send in the signal uh, on each uh, uh, specific uh, uh, input grating that we are interested to see. In order to be uh, uh, proper uh, in the alignment, so here we have a waveguide that where uh, um, that uh, has an input grating here. So then this waveguide is running all over and at the other extreme of the input uh, uh, grating uh, line. So you have the output grating. So that is used to uh, uh, allow you to align carefully the fiber array to the chip. And what you do see here is indeed the light that is scattering, that is traveling through that waveguide, showing that indeed the alignment was quite good. And then now, so we have the chip that is uh, uh, connected to the blue to the fiber array, and uh, we have to perform then biocompatibility test in order to make a stable package. This was not easy, so we tried different kind of views. And the, uh, at the end, we were able to, be, to, to find the proper view that uh, is not affecting in a negative way the culture of neurons that will be plated on, on the chip. So once you do the biocompatibility test, uh, so you have your uh, array uh, 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 of fiber that is uh, 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 connected to the chip, uh, and then you can test whether indeed uh, the uh, uh, single grating is scattering the light where you aim to have the light scattered. So here is the grating under, so the UC here is the photonic chip under the microscope. Here is the optical images where you see all the grating. So this is a magnification. So here you see the single grating, then you let the light in and you observe the scattering of the light. So indeed, so we are able to do that. So here is another example. So where you see the gratings and the fact that in the grating matrix, we can decide which one of the grating is uh, uh, turned on or off. So then you package everything. So you put in a system. So this is the system. These are all the fibers. So here is uh, the uh, paper dish where the uh, uh, neurons can be planted. And then you package everything. You perfect everything because what you have to do now is to take this system, put into a a, a, an incubator. So first you have to sterilize the system, put in an incubator plate, the neurons on top, and then do the experiment of selected excitation. So unfortunately, so we are here, so we still have not uh, experimental data that show that uh, the neurons can be uh, addressed in, uh, uh, by using this photonic chip. So now we have the tools to consolidate the factor and the last point here is how can we now read the, uh, the memories? So how can we read the activity of the neurons? So the technique that uh, one can use is optical reading by using indicators. For example, here is an indicator of, uh, it's called the calcium indicator that show you that uh, when you stimulate the neurons, so then uh, this indicator shows the activity of the neuron. Or you can use uh, dyes that are sensitive to the voltage and follow the uh, 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 membrane uh, voltage potential that propagates. So what is called the, the, the electrical spike that is propagating in the, in the neurons. So here is an image uh, of the culture, uh, uh, which is not uh, stimulated. And here is the image when we have a stimulus. So the, you, you, you see the activity of the function. So you can use optical reading, or what we decide to do is that to use uh, uh, electrophysiological reading. And for doing that, so we use an array of electrodes. So this is the chip, and then on the surface, so this is something that you can buy, and on the surface of the chip, you have a series of 
electrons that records the potential, the local potential in your uh, uh, neuronal culture. So here you see a, an optical image of your uh, uh, near uh, array, so multi electrode array, where you have the electrodes. And on top of them, you see that you have the uh, 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 formation of uh, uh, neuronal uh, networks. So here you see a neuron, here you see another neuron. And then you record the electrical signal, and you see that spikes uh, are recorded, and the spikes have the typical shape of the uh, 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 electrical signal that results from the activation of a neuron, what is called a firing of a neuron. So this looks simple, but instead, so the system is quite complicated because you have your electrode array, then you have the next stage that can be placed in the incubator or under the microscope. Then you have a system that enables you to collect the signal, process the signal, and then send the proper signal to a PC, which is used to visualize and analyze the data. So in our uh, multi-electrode array system, so we had uh, uh, 60 electrodes, each one had a dimension of uh, uh, 10 micron in diameter, and they, those electrodes are spaced uh, 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 by 100 microns. And, uh, and then uh, you have to develop the proper software for that data acquisition, which uh, is uh, the software is aimed to uh, record and detect the spikes, uh, which is the firing, which results from the activation of the neurons. So the, the so this is quite, uh, the software is quite complicated because you have a lot of noise, but at the end, so you uh, detect the spike and then you can record the activity of the neuron. So here are a few results which uh, uh, describe the uh, spontaneous activity of uh, the, the culture of neurons in clearly in, in vitro. And what you see is this uh, uh, average uh, uh, number of spikes uh, as a function of the days of the culture in vitro, you see that after 15 days, so the activity uh, is uh, uh, growing uh, significantly up, and then due to the uh, uh, dying of the neurons, so then the activity is going up. And so in this, this is spontaneous, so the neural method is spontaneously uh, 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 working. And then uh, you can also uh, use the same array of electrodes in order to stimulate the activity. And here is the results. So this is the channels that you are looking at as a function of time and you are uh, stimulated. So you are sending it a signal in this specific point and you see how the information, so how the electrical signal is propagating through your culture. And then you uh, can identify uh, uh, from where uh, the uh, uh, reaction of nearby uh, neurons uh, occurs. So here is the uh, uh, electrode that has been stimulated, and those are the electrodes that are recording the propagation of, of the information in the uh, uh, neuronal culture. So here is another example. So you plant a, a, another neurons, and you see the, the nearby neurons that uh, react. So now, we are ready to do the uh, final experiment, which we have not yet done. And so this final experiment is essentially an experiment where we use the uh, DLT, so the digital light uh, uh, processing unit, uh, to excite a specific uh, 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 set of neurons. And then we can look at the image of the specific set of neurons that we are exciting and record uh, 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 the activity of uh, the network. And so in this way, we should be able to prove that it is indeed, it is possible to write and read uh, engrams in our uh, uh, culture of neurons. And once we do that, so we can start modeling the uh, uh, network formation by using uh, a standard uh, uh, simulation software. So this is my last slide. So this the tech home message after two and a half years collaborating with uh, fantastic people in my group. And uh, I should say that biology is not easy. Even though so we, we think that biology is easy, it's not easy. 
Biology needs a lot of time, patience, and perseverance. Just to give you an idea, so one, if you fail in experiment, so then you need to wait a, a lot of time because you need to have mice and the mice need to be pregnant and you have to extract the, the uh, neurons from, from, from the mice and then you have to culture uh, the, the, the neuronal culture and that takes time, so uh, weeks and, and, and days. However, so in this play, where uh, you have many different uh, 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 competents that are collaborating. So this is very amazing, it's very fascinating. Uh, in vitro studies are not easy, are very complex. So you may have that your culture died and you do not know why. For example, so initially we were packaging the photonic chip in a plastic dish. And then we realized that, and this is then, usually in, 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 in biology, so the plastic tissue are used everywhere. But then we realize that for the same reason, so our neurons uh, 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 do not like the plastic, so all the culture dies, even though the glue was, was biocompatible, but the culture died. And so we had to replace the plastic dish with a glass dish. So this is uh, something that happens. So in vitro studies are complex. I, I cannot imagine what, what, what it does mean to, to perform in vivo studies so for the moment, not in vivo studies. However, uh, 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 so the uh, uh, final goal of our information is to uh, valid. So our brain store information locally and the way the storing of information is not yet understood. So what we aim to do is to try to use uh, the tools that I, we have developed and of which I have talked uh, about today in order to elucidate some the, uh, of the mechanisms that are uh, behind the storing of and processing of information in our brain. So I would like to acknowledge the people in the group. Uh, we do work not only on neuromorphic photonics, but also quantum photonics, if you are interested so you go to the website and you can have uh, uh, information about what we are doing. I clearly have to acknowledge the different uh, project and sponsor agency of our work. And uh, 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 just for you, so I'm interested, so we are looking for PhD students in different topics. So if you are interested to participate in this fascinating activity, so you have something to write to me. So thanks for all for the attention and that to Stefan for sharing the session. And finish. Thank you to you, Lorenzo. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, for your uh, really amazing, fascinating lecture. Uh, we are all waiting for uh, your final results of your, uh, your experiments, uh, maybe in the next uh, school. And uh, sure. we have time now for uh, the questions. I, I open here the panel. Maybe you, you can uh, read. Uh, can you read the, the question, maybe loud to, and then give an answer? Yes, I, I do. So I have a, sec a, a question. Do you see the possibility to build large biological neural networks in 3D? So the answer is yes. So, <clears throat> so there are what, what are called uh, um, uh, oh, 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 I uh, 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 so these uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, 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 aggregates, uh, uh, micro, oh, what? I apologize, I, I don't remember the name. So this is uh, uh, possible to do that. So actually people have done. And the, uh, uh, what is here uh, 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 difficult is the fact that uh, uh, in our experiment, so we have a 2D, 2D network, and so we can have access uh, to this network from uh, the two sides of the network, so this is easy. In 3D, it is not easy to have direct access to each single neuron in the uh, three-dimensional network. And uh, so, uh, uh, what concept of technology engineering workloads do you see? And uh, uh, so we have a project where we do make a scaffold 
uh, uh, bio by using biocompatible matrix material scaffolds, and then we insert the neurons into the scaffold so that to sculpture really the three dimensional structure. And do you think this would be uh, uh, become directly practically useful, or will we ultimately have to move beyond biology? Now, this is uh, actually so. This is a microorganism that are used for uh, 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 medical applications. So they do test drugs and so things like that. So 3D is really very important. But we prefer to start from a simplistic reductionist model of 2D so that to really uh, address the single neurons in the network. Another question is, is there also ongoing work on exploiting the plasticity of these biological networks to do more dynamic interactive learning, extending this work of static memory recall. So this is a, a, a very nice question and is indeed a, a, our ultimate goal. So we want to use the plasticity of the biological network in order to improve the computational capability of the photonic network. So plasticity means that uh, the uh, interconnection developed based on the experience. So you have the formation of different engrams, and this is the plasticity, uh, uh, depending on the kind of information that you want to store. So these are the questions I got. Okay, so I think there are no, no probably no more questions. Uh, at this stage, and uh, of course, you, you there will be possibility of asking more questions in your next uh, lecture, yeah. right? Tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, okay, so uh, thank you again, Lorenzo. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Then. See you on these screens uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.